Oral Fluid Collection The requirements for who can collect an oral fluid specimen are the same as for urine. Anyone who is trained in the collection procedure and is not a direct supervisor, co-worker, or any other personal relationship with the donor may collect an oral fluid sample. In forensic testing, the donor may not collect his own specimen. Where can you collect a forensic oral fluid specimen? An oral fluid specimen can be collected almost anywhere where there's a clean, comfortable place where the donor and collector can sit, a desk for paperwork, and a place to secure collection supplies. What do you need to collect a forensic oral fluid specimen? A sealed Quantasol collection device, including a swab and specimen tube with preservative, a CCF with attached seals, a specimen bag, and shipping containers. The collection process. As with a urine collection, it is extremely important to complete the collection process with one donor before starting the process with the next. First, greet the donor and verify identity with a government-issued photo ID. Then, complete step one of the CCF. This is to be filled out before receiving the specimen from the donor. This step must be filled in completely. The employer or agency information may be pre-printed. If it isn't, fill it in. Remember to press down, because you're making five copies. Next, fill in collection site information. The collector should not give personal contact information. Check the box indicating the reason for the test. Record the specimen type. Enter the donor's social security number in the space provided on the CCF. Indicate the tests ordered and provide MRO information. The MRO information may be pre-printed. If it isn't, record the address, telephone number, and fax number of the MRO. Ensure that the donor has not had anything in his mouth for at least 10 minutes prior to collection. Therefore, do not collect the oral fluid specimen immediately. Do not permit the donor to eat or drink anything while waiting for collection. Hand the donor a collection kit and observe them opening it. Allow the donor to inspect the expiration date of the device. Ask the donor to remove the swab from its packaging and place the pad under his or her tongue. Ask the donor not to chew on the pad, to talk, or to remove the device from his or her mouth until the indicator turns blue. Having the donor keep their head down will allow gravity to help with oral fluid collection. The donor must be in full view of the collector during this period, and the collector cannot leave the room for any reason during an oral fluid collection. The volume adequacy indicator should turn blue within a few minutes. When it does, ask the donor to hold the transport tube in the upright position and remove the red cap by pushing up. If the indicator does not turn blue after 10 minutes, consider the oral fluid uptake complete and ask the donor to remove the red cap. If the indicator does not turn blue after 10 minutes, consider the oral fluid uptake complete and ask the donor to remove the red cap. Ask the donor to grasp the handle of the swab and remove it from his or her mouth. Ask the donor to place the swab pad first into the tube. Ask the donor to replace the red cap, pushing it down until it snaps into place. In full view of the donor, write the date on a seal from the CCF and remove the seal. Center security seal A over the top of the tube and press on both sides. Note, if a split specimen is to be collected, repeat the process above with a second Quantasol device and use the B seal on the second sample. Present to the donor the sealed bottles and the seals with the specimen identification number showing. Ask the donor to confirm that the numbers match and that they match the number on the CCF. Date each of the tamper evidence seals on the bottles. Ask the donor to initial the seals. If the donor refuses to initial, note this on the remarks line in step two on the CCF and continue the collection process. Instruct the donor to read the donor portion of the CCF. Step five, copy two. If the donor agrees with the statement, direct the donor to fill out the certification area, including a signature, a printed name, date, day and evening telephone numbers, and date of birth. 
Fill in the collector's portion of Step 4 on the CCF. Fill in the name of the delivery service to whom the specimens are to be released for delivery to the laboratory. Finally, place CCF Copy 1 in the document pouch of the specimen bag. Seal and prepare the specimen package for shipment and distribute the remaining CCF copies as required. Split specimens should be placed together in the same bag.